I think God's Word can create powerful people. I don't mean brute force, CEO, top down, I'm calling the shots. But I mean a person who's got this inward strength that when a storm comes, when tough times come, they feel the wind, but they, they don't blow over. If we've ever needed the promises of God, we have to have them right now. Right now, every one of us, each and every one of us are choosing, are we gonna build a life based on fear? Are we gonna build a life based on faith? Mm -hmm. Faith in God's promises. Uh, there's over 7,000 promises in the Bible. Mm -hmm. I was blown away when I came across that statistic. 7,000 times God says, I promise, I promise, I My promise, goodness. I promise. And so we could choose, you know, if we're going to build our life on the news that we hear uh, on the uh, many news media outlets, if we're going to build our life based upon what the friend down the street just said, he heard somebody say, somebody say, or if we're going to build our lives on the promises of God. Mm -hmm. And, that, and that's, that's, I think, what it boils down to. And so we got to know the promises, trust the promises, and then allow those promises to become a part of our day-to-day -day life. Let's start, uh, Max, uh, with the idea that we are, we're on the same page. These are unprecedented times of social unrest. Um, who would have thought the um, you know, pandemic was going to do what it did globally? Um, people... This is, this is getting rough. We need some promises and we need this program to speak to the fears, I believe, that are present in our viewing audience mm -hmm. right now. Because we're facing not just the pandemic, not just the economic uncertainty and the social unrest, but we're facing the fear that comes with it all. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It's, uh, it's unprecedented. It's like three tsunamis at one time. I think God's Word can create powerful people. I don't mean brute force, CEO, top down, I'm calling the shots. But I mean a person who's got this inward strength that when a storm comes, when tough times come, they feel the wind, but they, they don't blow over. Mm -hmm. Kind of like those, those uh, tent poles I was telling you about. You know, yeah. the winds come, but they're able to stand up. And I, I believe that the promises of God uh, can create those kind of sturdy people, uh, people who, who, who face challenges with hope and strength, not with pithy answers and not with some shallow naivete that, oh, it's not as bad. The life we lead these days, it can be tough. We acknowledge that. But we're going to believe that God is stronger and he can make me tougher. So I think that's the way I would answer that. It's a parable of, of building your house on the rock exactly. instead Where of the sand. sand. Yeah. You know, you put your faith in, in things that, that the world trusts in. It's all going to be taken away. Yeah. There's this passage in the book of Philippians that's a promise that's a favorite of mine. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So even this morning early, I, I said, okay, Lord, here's my specific requests. Would you please help us? You said by prayer and petition, let your requests be made known to God. Well, here's my request. And I submitted it. And I said, Lord, I'm thankful because you said do it with gratitude. And now I'm just going to believe that, that the peace of God is going to come. And, and, and it always, the peace of God always comes. So you stood on a promise of yes, God sir. this morning. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> and that's how this works. Yeah. I mean, you do it hour by hour, day by day. And so you, what, what I encourage you to do is make, uh, go through a, a book like this, or there's even books that list all the promises in the Bible and pick out 10 of them and memorize them. You know, just commit them to memory. Make them your go-to promises that you can turn to. And you're right there ready to recite them to yourself. And this is important. You're ready to recite them to other people because people are all so full of fear. They need somebody to say the word of God is living and active. You know, that's a promise. So they, they need people to speak a promise into their life. And a lot of times people will look at you and say, how is it you believe this? 
Wow. And you say, well, because I live it. I live it. It, it. It's my life. It's my life. And that's that contagious faith that, that, uh, that we can share. Um, we've got a couple of minutes left. Let's, let's move a few more people through some of these promises, something that is meaningful to you, a promise that you can stand on, something that you go to. Do you have a good one? Because I've got a good one. You go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Father, I am so grateful that you have called me to be a co-laborer with you. Mm. I believe you can take me as I am today and use me for your work and for your glory. I set my heart on you, Lord, as I seek first your kingdom. I trust that you are adding to my life everything I need to accomplish your plans. I believe my de best days are ahead. Mm. Amen. I love that. That's well, activating the goodness activating of God goodness in your life. God. You know, the, the, the passage that came to my mind when you asked is the one in Romans 8 that says we are co-heirs with Christ. Okay. There's a great promise. Mm. Think about being a, a part of the inheritance, the same inheritance of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. That means that every capacity and ability that, that he has, we have access to. Now, we don't have to go out and beg God uh, we just have to receive what he's already promised to give us. Yeah. So there's unlimited wisdom. There's unlimited patience. There's unlimited uh, courage. So that changes the way I pray. So let's say I'm running low on patience today. Uh, rather than say, oh boy, I got to dig up some patience. I just can't find any patience. We say, no, it's, there's plenty there. Mm -hmm. There's plenty there. So Lord Jesus, please, right now, could I have just a little more patience That'd to help it. me <laughs> to get through this? I know the pantry is packed mm -hmm. and you, you're not a begrudging giver. And so I just tap in, I reach mm -hmm. up and I grab that. And I, and I can believe it's going to come. I believe it. There's no doubt it's going to come. So there's a promise. Now, the secular mindset says, dig down deep and see if you can, you know, buy, pull yourself up by your bootstraps and become a better person, you know. But the scripture says, oh, no, you can't do it. But God can. God's going to give it to you. And so we pray and it's almost like it's downloaded into us. Those are beautiful promises. It just, again, it gets back to that worldview. At TBN, our mission is to use every available means to reach as many individuals and families as possible with the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping make the gospel of grace go around the world. Without you, we couldn't do it. God bless you.